Hello everyone, it's Shane Conto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Lost in the Wasteland, my weekly interview show where I learn a little bit more about somebody else's perspective on movies. And joining me is former student worker and writer student, and I guess now movie friend, Emily Wozniewski, thank you so much for coming on to chat movies with me. Of course, thank you for having me. So... I always like to start off this show by allowing my guests if they want to shamelessly plug anything. So is there anything you'd like to shamelessly plug, Emily? Um, yeah, so I have an Etsy shop. It's called Emily's Cricket Studio. Um, I sell all different types of stickers, um, you know, anything from music albums, movie covers, school psychology-esque things. Um, I like to be creative, and I found that using my Cricut to make stickers for not just me but other people it's fun to me so that's all <laughs> i have bought some stickers and I have this laptop that i'm recording on right now this is one of my wasteland review <laughs> stickers and they came out really awesome so highly <laughs> recommend i'll put a link in the description so you can check Thank out you. emily's work <laughs> but let's start with everybody's favorite question love getting put on the spot and what's your favorite movie um this is a hard question for me because I feel like I don't have one that I really love. But whenever somebody does ask me this question, I say the movie Flipped. Um, okay. It's a classic kind of girl movie. Like, I don't know. I just could watch it, like, every single day. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll admit I have not watched Flip, but I do recognize Flip. Um, yeah. So what do you love about it? I don't know. I feel like at the time when I watched it, mm -hmm. like, I feel like it just was, it just seems nostalgic to me now. Like, I just like, you know, it's a classic little, like, elementary school, like, boy next door kind of love mm -hmm. story um, for, like, younger younger kids. And yeah. I just, I just like it. I like the actress. I think mm -hmm. her name is Caitlin Deaver. Um, but I like, I like the actress. Unless it's not her, and I may be misspeaking, but that it's not okay. her, then it, it looks like her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once you get to that point where you start having that kind of nostalgia for, like, specific things, it's like, there's a reason why one of my favorite movies of all time is Shrek. Maybe it's because I watched it when I was 10 <laughs> and thought it was the greatest thing ever. And I still yeah. do. But, you know, you don't yeah. have those kinds of movies that really stick out to you. Yeah. Did this come out, like, 2010? I think by, so. It's, by it's, also, it's also a book um, that I have been wanting to read, so I I have the book and I just have to sit down and read it, but let me look. Yeah, when uh, yeah, 2010. Wendelin Van Drannen. It's crazy. This is a Rob Reiner movie. Um, <laughs> no Rob Reiner. I didn't think he made anything past the bucket list, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Now, Emily, What's your earliest memory of going to the movies? Um, this one was hard for me to answer. I actually don't even have anything written down. Um, but I feel like going to the movies with my friends in middle school, like I don't really remember going as like a little kid. My parents aren't really super into movies. My dad has not okay. been in a movie theater since 30 years ago when he was going on dates with my mom um <laughs> and my mom would take us but I don't remember like a specific movie so I feel like the first one I kind of remember is like seeing like the greatest showman in eighth grade like in the theater or something like that with like all my friends and like singing the songs and stuff <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like that didn't make me feel really old for a minute <laughs> <laughs> Which I did see you uh, post on Letterbox about The Greatest Showman. Yeah, I, I just rewatched it. <laughs> I distinctly remember taking my mom to go see The Greatest <laughs> Showman. Uh, and she had a blast. And that's the thing. That movie is so endlessly entertaining. And Yeah, I, it's, just, it's just great. <laughs> I, I listen to the music on a regular basis because there are a few songs that will get you pumped as The Greatest Showman. And yeah. I just so and I love the songs. one with Zac Efron and and uh, Hugh Jackman. I I, I rewatched it because I was excited for Deadpool and Wolverine, and I wanted to see like Hugh there Jackman. 
Um, <laughs> so I like just love the songs. I have the the playlist for the for the movie in my Apple Music, and it just comes up on my car like every now and then. <laughs> There you go. So, which is actually funny that you brought up Deadpool and Wolverine because if you're paying attention, uh, Greatest Showman fans, you get a little bit of a tease in it. So, just just a little bit, but you know, it was there. Um, Yeah. but yeah, I I distinctly remember having some memories of like middle school and going to the movies with friends Yeah. and stuff like that. And you know, that's always fun, like going with like a group of friends to check out a movie. Yeah. My my middle school experience was seeing Spider Man three and Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. So just you know, a little bit older, it's all good. Yeah. Now, but, um, yeah. Being yeah. at the at our movie theater, like there was only one movie theater on the south shore of Staten Island, which is like where I live. Um, at the time, there wasn't a Regal yet, there wasn't an AMC yet, so we just had the local movie theater, and like that was just like the place to be as a as a seventh or eighth grader. <laughs> There you go. It's uh definitely like northeast, great place for movies. I was just telling somebody, I'm like, I don't feel like I could leave New Jersey. I have like 10 theaters within 30 minutes of my house. I'm like now we have three within like 10 minutes of me, so it's not too bad. (laughs) And I have been to a theater in Staten Island, thanks to my friend Joe, who insisted (laughs) that we drive there for his birthday to go see um my neighbor Totoro at the um the Alamo the Alamo, Dra- Alamo Draft yeah. House. I so, haven't been to the one on Staten Island, but I went to the one in Brooklyn for a few like early movie screenings, mm-hmm. and that's right. Re- I love ordering the food there. <laughs> so, Joe, if you're listening, you're welcome. <laughs> His birthday's going to be coming up again. I'm like, I wonder if I'll be making another trip to Staten Island. <laughs> we'll find out. But Emily, do you have a particular favorite filmmaker? So like director or like writer or anybody like that? Yeah. So this was, all. I mean, I'm not going to say this for every single question, but this was hard for me to answer because <laughs> I really don't know anything about directors or writers or really, yeah. you know, any of that. Um, but I was like talking with my boyfriend, Matt, who was a guest on here. Um, he was mm. like, well, you really liked like these movies. Like, let's see who the director was. So I, I really liked the, the director style of the Spider-Man movies, Sam Raimi. Okay. And he also directed, like, one of the Doctor Strange movies. I just liked, like, it was kind of, like, goofy to me. I just, like, I li- I like I never really point out movies that I'm like, oh, I liked how this is directed, but for those, I did. So I feel like I could say him. He has a very distinct, campy, um, very creative way of yeah. crafting a movie. And it's very interesting that you brought him up. Like I mentioned Spider-Man earlier. It's like I grew up watching all three of his Spider-Man movies and his first two Spider-Man movies are pretty special for like most kids my age because like we were growing up with that when that came out and I'm a huge fan of Multiverse of Madness. I thought that was like the perfect campy, weird, yeah. strange way of portraying that movie. It's very funny because he's most famous for his Evil Dead movies and making horror movies. I guess I'm going to have to watch those. <laughs> I will say the first one was made when he was in, he was literally a college student. And wow. he filmed it with his friends. So, like, <laughs> it's definitely very low budget. But generally, his horror movies have a lot of, like, slapstick and crazy comedy in them. Yeah, I like so that. So, <laughs> it's fun. He even made a Western in the 90s called The Quick and the Dead. I'm like, this is so weird. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and he also made Oz, The Great and Powerful, which was like his last movie he directed before he came back and did the Doctor Strange movie. He's had some a very interesting friends, career. Some of my friends used to call me Waz, The Great and Powerful. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> now, I'm like, do you have a particular favorite like actor or actresses? Yeah, so it was easier for me to pick like a, a male actor. I really like Channing Tatum. Um, okay. And it kind of, the new Deadpool and Wolverine movie kind of like solidified my love for Channing Tatum. Uh, if you know, you know. Um, but I like really like him in his like romancy movies, like The Vow um, mm-hmm. and uh, what is it called? Step Up, which is like 
rom com ish. Um, but yeah, I really Get like him. I, moves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which like he has them, so like flaunt yeah. them. So yeah, I really Bizarre. like like yeah, uh, and like Dear John, like the Nicholas Sparks, because mm -hmm. I really like the book, so I really like the movie. I'll admit, I was not a fan of Channing Tatum until I watched 21 Jump Street. Um, oh, yeah, those movies, too. Him and Jonah Hill are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, Magic Mike. Uh, felt yeah. like Step Up and Magic Mike were basically made for Channing Tatum. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, and I even, like, recently, Fly Me to the Moon. Oh, I loved that movie. <laughs> I I enjoyed that movie a lot more than I thought I was going to because to be perfectly honest, every time I saw the trailer, I'm like, uh, I'm gonna hate going to see this movie because <laughs> like generally I see everything, so yeah. even if I don't want to or not, I'm committed. Um, but I enjoyed that. I love Scarlett Johansson was great in it, but like I thought yeah. Channing Tatum did a good job too. So yeah. it's a fun time, and yes, won't say anything more. But it cracked me up. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I didn't think that Candy Tatum surprisingly popping up in a movie could beat This Is the End. <laughs> when I saw that, and when he popped up in that movie, my brother, I thought he was gonna suffocate. This was laughing so hard during that movie. I took him for his birthday when that <laughs> came out. And Channing Tatum in that for the very brief amount of time that he's in it, I'm just like, he agreed to do this. <laughs> like one of those kinds of things. Now, Emily, do you have a particular film that you feel like you could just watch like every day? Um, so I've recently been re-watching the Harry Potter movies, and I was okay. thinking of those movies just because I feel like they're just classics. Like I could watch, I could watch, I could do a Harry Potter binge any single day. Um, but along with those, one of my favorites that I forgot to say was Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, and I think that okay. I could watch that every single day. <laughs> I I haven't seen that one, but I distinctly remember when that movie came out and like how <laughs> big that was. Yeah. But oh, I was a Harry Potter kid. Like, I distinctly remember going to Walmart when they opened, <laughs> going home and finishing those books in two days. Because, like, yep. that's what it was like being a Harry Potter kid. Yep. And luckily for me growing up, I didn't read the first two books until the movie was coming out. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was 10 years old when the first movie came out. But then I was there opening weekend and they used to come out in november for my birthday so i even had a harry potter birthday party and went to go wow. see chamber of secrets so yeah <laughs> i loved harry potter that much and i cannot hear the word always without feeling emotional because of harry potter <laughs> so thank you thank you alan rickman um <laughs> But the funny thing is, they know people love been watching Harry Potter, which is why we kept having Harry Potter weekend, like, I feel like once a month on TV. And now, yeah. Max, you can just watch them whenever the hell you want, just over and over again. So, yep. now, Harry Potter is a special thing. So, yeah. this is not one of my formal questions, but now I do have to ask you, <laughs> what house are you? I'm a Ravenclaw. <laughs> It's funny because I thought I would be two when I took the quiz, and then it turned out to be Gryffindor, and I'm like, I, I guess think you're a Gryffindor. Two. Matt's a Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I recently I went to Universal last year. Okay. I did like the tests or whatever, and we're going back again in, in about two months, so I'm excited. That's awesome. <laughs> I I have a quick side story because when I went on my senior trip to disney and universal it's the only time i've ever been so this is like 14 years ago it was two months before Her the wizarding world of harry potter opened up and my really? classmate noel was sitting in front of the construction <laughs> just sitting ah. there it's like why can't you be open <laughs> two months emily two months gotta go to universal 
<laughs> Eventually, my my wife grew up very much a Disney Disney kid and going to Disney World. So maybe he's trying to convince her mom to pay for it. Uh, so there you go. Now, Emily, what's a film that you feel like you connect with because it relates to another interest of yours? So I was trying to think, um, I really love reading books, but I couldn't think of a movie specifically that I thought of like, you know, the just like the, the joy of books mm -hmm. um, that is portrayed in a movie. I may have seen one, but I just couldn't remember. So I went a different route. Um, another one of my interests is psychology, as you know, I'm going to be a school psychologist. Um, and I recently watched this movie called A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe. And I feel like that's heavily related to psychology. And I really enjoyed it. I really like Russell Crowe. I just watched Gladiator today. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I feel like that kind of relates to one of my interests. It's very interesting because if you don't know anything about the movie, you'll be surprised to find out that it's about mental health and yeah. stuff like that. Um, what's very interesting is... Having you having gone to Ryder, right down the road in Princeton, there used to be a pizzeria, Princeton Pie, that had pictures of Russell Crowe on campus and stuff like that. Because, like, <laughs> they filmed it in Princeton at Princeton University, which was pretty yeah. cool. But I am also a huge Russell Crowe fan, and I will watch Gladiator, like, any day. Yeah. <laughs> any, day any day I have, like, a spare three hours to throw yeah. out there. But no, a beautiful well, mind. The, the Gladiator Two is coming out, so that comes <laughs> out a week after my birthday for Thanksgiving, and I am ready. <laughs> um, I was that trailer they released, despite interesting musical choices, uh, yeah. definitely <laughs> definitely grabbed me, and I'm like, well, you got me now. Now I'm excited. <laughs> but it, I grew up a book kid. And I used to still sleep in a twin size bed despite being almost six feet tall, just so I could fit mm -hmm. more bookshelves in my room. Uh, yep, as and, you can see, I got a yes. new bookshelf in my room. My dad made it. <laughs> awesome. And there's definitely, like, I remember as a kid watching the movie Page Master, which was like this animated film from like the early mm -hmm. 90s. And this kid goes on an adventure through books and stuff like that. <laughs> in this magical library and it's a lot of fun and the film's not about books but i know i love perks of being a wallflower and i really my, love that book too actually one of my favorite parts of the in the film of him going to paul rudd um i wish paul rudd was my english teacher um <laughs> giving him books to do like reports on and stuff like that and you know like periodically him talking about them and stuff like that I love that movie a lot um but yeah I could definitely relate to the lo lover of books and stuff like that which <laughs> honestly is probably I always check in and ask how what books you're reading and stuff like that so there you go yep now who's a movie character you feel like you connect with on a personal level so this was an, actually an easy question for me to answer because okay. I just um, saw Inside Out 2. So I feel like I connected a lot with Riley. Um, maybe not at the age that she's at. I feel like she's only supposed to be like 13 uh -huh. in that movie. But like when I was like 19, like I was going through that with the anxiety and, and all that. So that movie like really um, stuck with me and i really like riley and i really like the, the new characters they introduced mm -hmm. I even got like an inside out uh anxiety hoodie right so i'm excited <laughs> maya hawk was fantastic and anxiety yes. was a great introduction to the movie yes. and i i don't deal with anxiety mm -hmm. in that way but my wife does and a lot of my friends do and i remember watching that with my wife and the reaction she had, especially towards the climax of like the part, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, oh no! I literally started crying. I cried. Oh. <laughs> it, I'm a crier to movies. <laughs> well, and you know that's a special thing when you can connect with a movie in that way. Um, 
I got such a kick out of nostalgia, though. A little granny popping up yeah. like, <laughs> Um Embarrassment was probably my favorite new character. I just he just looked like such a big lovable. I just wanted to hug him, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Him, him and his sweat, him and his sweaty hands. Oh yeah, Ennui was so French. Um, <laughs> I love that actress too because she's a very famous young French actress who's been in a lot of different things. So that was a lot of fun when she. I heard that she was getting cast in that. Um, Noi is definitely not my speed. I'm not that kind <laughs> of energy, but you know, we all have a. We all have a nice mixture, and that's the point, yep. right? <laughs> now, Emily, what's a film that you love that you feel like would surprise people? So, I love the Saw movies. <laughs> <laughs> I like I. I don't even like horror movies, but like I really love the Saw movies. Like, I, I my boyfriend introduced me to them about like a year ago. Now we started watching them in order, and I just like they kept getting better and better. I just love them. <laughs> I will say I cannot I don't agree with you in terms of my taste and I am not a big fan of Saw that is not my kind of thing but there are a lot of people that absolutely love the Saw movies I, I just really like them I like the the main the I don't remember her name but the the main girl character um I think the second or third was my favorite I really just love the gore and like they always keep me on the edge of my seat but it's not too scary. Like, I won't have nightmares about it. I'll, uh, so I'm a big baby. So, like, <laughs> I get scared easy. And, like, I'm not scary. It's more of, like, a, I feel so uncomfortable in this moment watching <laughs> this happen to this person. And what's really funny is I've seen the first one, I've seen Spiral, and I've seen the tenth one. <laughs> so... I have not watched a ton of them because after I watched the first one, I'm like, you know what? I don't think this is my my cup of tea. So, I think you got to go back and watch the second one. The second one's good. <laughs> I will. I will certainly add it to my watch list. <laughs> and then my last question for you is, what do you love most about movies? Um. So, like I said, I like to read books. I like how, like, stories are written. So I like to see how, like, a story is portrayed through a movie. Um, one of my favorite gen genres is just, like, you know, straight drama. Not, like, romance drama, but just, like, telling, like, a story. Um, like, I recently watched Manchester by the Sea, and I, I really like that movie. It's just, like, how the story is told. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes they could be based on a true story. Sometimes they could be made up or based on, you know, but I like to see, like, how a story is portrayed. Um, and something, a, a type of movie that I do really like is, like, based on a true story or, like, mm -hmm. um, what should we call it? Or based on a book because I, I like to get multiple portrayals of the same thing I like to see. And that's always an interesting thing, especially as, like, a reader, seeing how people interpret uh a book that you love and seeing it come to life on screen and sometimes you hate it and you're just like well, <laughs> why'd you do this to the book that i love and yeah. sometimes they do some really interesting things with it um like i know one that sticks out to me a lot that i'm still frustrated about is that they can't get i am legend right to the book <laughs> Which, honestly, the Will Smith movie works just perfectly for what it's trying to do. But, like, one of the things I love most about the book is it's so eerie and uncomfortable because, like, this is a man being harassed by vampires every night outside of his home. And then they just kind of made them zombies or yeah. whatever the hell they work in the Will Smith movie. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, having those special kinds of moments and really getting to see how things are interpreted and you know yeah. we're going to be getting new harry potter for sure yeah uh, i i started re-watching the harry potter movies and reading the books alongside like at the same time uh -huh. um because i heard that they were going to come up they were going to release a new show i think in january ish they it's warner brothers will make sure that it's up and running as soon as possible <laughs> so that they can make money uh yeah. and you know what <laughs> We're all going to watch yes, it. Should. So, 
no matter what people say about like why are they redoing this those same people will be there to watch it when it comes yeah. out admittedly myself included <laughs> um but I always like to wrap up my show Emily is I like to have my guests ask me a question so what would so, you like to ask the Wasteland reviewer <laughs> something I thought of is if you were to play like a character in a movie or like an animated character what do you think you would play so do you are you asking specifically animated or I mean anim I was thinking animated but then I just yeah animated like what kind of character would you want to be uh it's I would imagine that I'd probably be a talking bear in something like I that's what you, that's what you relate to on a spiritual level <laughs> so especially when I was in like college and stuff like that like people called me Shane Bear and my Shane Bear hugs because like I have that vibe I literally owned a shirt in college that said free hugs and it was a bear holding a like a sandwich board sign so like I think it would be I think it would really fit my vibe of being just like a talking bear in something um and there's a lot of fun like obviously like Baloo is probably the most famous talking bear in animation <laughs> i'm not quite that lazy that's not that's not quite my vibe uh bill murray was perfect. like a joyful bear <laughs> yeah absolutely i could be could be little john bro like the robin hood animated movie uh same irony i am not little so there you go fits perfect <laughs> but no um it's it was so funny because i was just having a conversation because like my wife and i watch uh house of the dragon every week um i unexpectedly got super into game of thrones within the past <laughs> like there was like two seasons left when i started binge watching the whole entire show and I asked her, like, who she thinks she would play in Game of Thrones, and I specifically said, I would 100% want to play Robert Baratheon for the whole four episodes that he's in the show, because he'd be <laughs> such a fun time to play. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know if you've watched Game of Thrones or anything. Actually, like, I haven't. I don't know if it's a show I would like, but I do, like, have it in the back of my mind sometimes. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> I specifically did not watch it because my friends in college were supposed to wait to start it with me and then didn't. And then I'm like, I'm not watching it now out of spite. And then, then it turned into, I'm sick of hearing winter is coming. I will watch the show when winter has arrived. And then I distinctly remember when season six ended and like a news, like one of those, like, uh, TV movie news sites popped up. Winter is here. I'm like, well, I guess that's my call to super <laughs> show. Yeah. So I binge watched six seasons and then watched the last two live. Um, <laughs> according to most people, I 100% got on at the right time. Nice. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but no, I, that was a fun question. I definitely would play an animated bear in something. Whether it's like I remember watching Brother Bear for the first time, too. That's a sweet movie and stuff like that. And Justice for Brave. <laughs> I think a lot of people give Brave a lot of crap. I enjoy Brave a lot. But anyway. <laughs> Emily, thank you so much for coming on and chatting of movies course. with me. Of course. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.